Android handhelds are some of the easiest and cheapest devices in the handheld community to get. These sorts of devices are still my recommendation for any PS2 emulation and under, and they're really starting to get good at native Android gaming too. However, if you have a big emulation library, you definitely want something called the front end on your device to easily navigate your games. These also provide different ways of sorting our collections so you can go by different genres, and they have some nice cover art and everything in one area. I think these are absolutely absolutely essential on an emulation device. However, a lot of these, like Daiji Show, have a lot of options and it can be a little overwhelming at first. So what happens if you want a front end like this, but without all this clutter and all these different options to sort it? Well, luckily for us, there's actually a new one that just released. Today, we're going to take a look at a brand new front end that you've probably never heard before. Daiji Show also has a little bit of a setup process, but overall, it's not too bad of a front end to get working. And this is still my go-to. Today though, we're going to ditch this front end and try this new one to see if it's any good. Without further ado, let's check out this new launcher and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. This here is Beacon Launcher and it aims to simplify the emulation setup by having all your ROMs automatically scraped for you. We recently checked out Titanius Launcher and unfortunately that didn't have automated scraping. This is a very minimalistic interface here and it's quite easy to navigate. It also has full controller support. It gives us a little bit of information about our game and the setup process is very straightforward. This is a paid front end though and I do think it's definitely worth the price. Compared to Daiji Show, this does have less features but it's a lot easier to get it set up and overall I do think it's a lot more user friendly. However this front end isn't perfect but it's constantly being updated and I'm really hopeful that this is going to be a big emulation front end in the community. At $2.99 do I think this front end is worth it? Well considering the developer is actively updating this absolutely. Without further ado, this is my review of Beacon Launcher. Let me show you how easy it is to set this up and I'll let you decide for yourself if it's worth the $2.99 price tag, but let's take a closer look. <laughs> As of recording this video here, you can see that he only has 10 plus downloads, so it's definitely a new front end. You can definitely tell that he's put a lot of care and attention into the development of this. We got a few different custom themes, and it has a little app page too. Overall, I do think that this looks really promising. So let me show you how to get it set up and we'll take a closer look at it. Special thanks to the developer for sending me this code to check this out. As with anything I review, I'm not being paid for this review and the only thing that he provided to me was the code for the app. All opinions are my own and he's not seeing this review before it goes up. Since I've already had this installed and set up previously, I completely cleared out the cache so this is going to be like a fresh install. So once you've downloaded it from the Google Play Store, let's see what setup process there is to it. The first thing that you're going to see here is going to tell you that you haven't configured any platforms yet. You're going to have to add these now to get this set up. Moving over to my capture card here, this is the first page that we're greeted with when we first install it. I also have all my ROMs here on my SD card and I put them under a folder called ROMs. Then they're just under the folder for each system. Back in the front end, let's go ahead and add some systems. Go ahead and click on the plus here. It's going to bring up this menu here and this is not as complicated as it looks. The first thing that it's asking us to do is to specify the platform type. This is going to be the system that you're trying to emulate. Let's go ahead and start with Game Boy. Now the player app is what we're going to be using to emulate it. It's going to give us a little list here of all the apps that we have installed on our device. I'm using RetroArch to emulate Game Boy, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Then we just need to know which core that we're using. I'm using the MGBA core, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Then the last thing that we have to do is just select the folder where our games are stored. Click on the menu in the top left corner, then go down to where your ROMs are stored. Mine are stored on my micro SD card here under that ROM folder and Game Boy and just select use this folder and give it permission to access those files and add the platform. Once you add the platform, it's going to automatically start scraping all your ROMs. After a short little while, all the cover art for your ROMs are going to start popping in. Once you're done scraping the cover art for your games in each of these systems, you're going to want to check to make sure that it works. Go ahead and click on one of your games. 
Cave Noir instantly booted up, so you can tell that the Game Boy 1 works. We've gone ahead and scraped our Game Boy collection, but there is a few things that are missing. This game here, Gradius did not get any box art. So how do we fix that? Well, there's two things that we can do. If it's a game that you don't want, you can delete it from that emulation library. It won't delete the game from your SD card, just the front end. Or we can rename it and let it scrape again to see if it picks it up. To do this, all we have to do is go to the settings menu down here or press Y on the console, then select the system that we're trying to edit, then scroll down until you see the game that we're looking for. There's Gradius right there. So let's go edit that. We can pick the image ourselves, but it's going to only work with images that are on our device. If you want it to automatically scrape, you're going to have to edit this title here to get it to work correctly. I'm going to take out the USA part just to see if it's going to come up with the game title. I'm going to go ahead and check that off and save that. Now that we've edited the title, I'm going to go ahead and rescrape that system. Go back to the main menu there and hit sync. This is going to take a second, but it should rescrape that system. After a few seconds, you can see, yeah, it did come up. So that was a pretty easy fix. I'm hoping the accuracy gets fixed in future versions, so this automatically picks up more games. But it's quite easy to fix, as you just saw. For the most part as well, we're getting some really high quality box art. These look absolutely amazing. So actually in the middle of a recording, funny thing is, he just pushed an update. And as you can see at the bottom here, we also have a different mode that we can sort. We can also now swap between a list or a grid. By default, this is set to gallery, but we can go list and that looks really cool too. Or we can go to the grid. The grid looks pretty awesome too. I'm probably going to leave it to gallery, but list looks pretty nice as well. This gallery mode here does remind me of this switch interface and I do really like it. Overall, this is a very clean and modern look to a game front end. We've got Game Boy added now. Well, how do we add more systems? Head back to the settings menu at the bottom or press Y, then select the plus in the bottom right corner. From there, we're going to have to do the same thing that we did to add the first system. The first thing that we need to do is to select the platform type again. I'm going to go down and add Nintendo DS, and I'm also using Drastic for that. So let's go down to Drastic, make sure to select the ROM folder. By default, it's also going to get the correct box art aspect ratio, but you can change this. Then just go ahead and add the platform when you're done. You can manually sync these, but as soon as you add the system, it will automatically start. To navigate your different systems, you can tap the L1 or R1 and it will rotate between these. I don't have any box art in DS right now, but this will come through eventually. You can also change the order of your systems relatively easy. Go back to the settings menu and simply just tap and hold and drag them down. And now you can see that the DS is first, then Game Boy comes after. Let's go ahead and add the rest of the systems on my device in here. Let's do Game Boy Advance next. We're using RetroArch for that, and I'm also using the MGBA Core. Once you find it, just select it, then just do the same thing that we've been doing for the other ones, and select your ROM folder. I kind of want to have my systems arranged by generations, so I'm going to put the oldest ones first. Let's add Game Boy Color in there. I'm using RetroArch for that again. I use the Gambate Core for that. That, select the folder and add the platform. It's really easy to get this set up. Just make sure to test one game in each system to make sure that the emulation core you've selected is correct. As soon as it works, just go to the next system. Let's give DS a try just to make sure that that works with Drastic. As you can see that worked right away, so let's move on to the next system. I've set up a few more systems, but there's something to note here. If you haven't set up an emulator first, you might have issues starting the game. For PSP, it's just going to come up with this initially. When you first start up an emulator, you might have to give it some permissions first before it can automatically link to Beacon. For PSP, for example, you're going to have to select the folder where your games are stored. Let's go ahead and do that now. As you can see here, it already says, hey, it already has PSP data. Are you sure that you want to select that folder? Just go ahead and say yes. Now that we've pre-configured the PSP emulator, you can try launching one of the games and it should start. 
Nintendo DS, PSP, GameCube, and PS2 all might have to be started first before you can link them to the front end. Setting up the systems here is pretty easy, but what else does the settings menu have in it? You can edit each one of the platforms here, and you might have to change the core or the emulation player here if that's selected incorrectly. We also have a theme page, we have a light theme, a dark theme, and you can also change the theme color. You can even change the font, but that's kind of neat too. Try Roboto here, let's change it to Emerald, and I'm just going to have it on the light theme. Remember, if it's not finding any of your games, just go back into the settings menu, locate the system that it's not showing in, and just rename the game. You can also view all your games in the system settings menu here. That gives you an easy way to scroll down just to see if anything is not loading correctly. If you have duplicates like I have here, you can also delete them, and that won't delete it from your SD card. A lot of the brackets here are throwing off the search. If you remove the brackets, it does seem to find them a lot better. We do have an apps drawer here if you press B, and that's in the bottom left corner. There is one negative thing about this. In Daiji Show, if you find an app and you don't want it, all you have to do is to hold your finger on it, and that brings up a menu that can let you uninstall that. We can also view the application info, and these are the two biggest ones that I wish that Beacon had. If we go to the application info, if you're having problems with an app, you can force stop it there. You can clear the cache if you want to start something fresh again. You can change battery settings and defaults, or you can uninstall from that menu. Or the option to be able to uninstall it directly from that menu itself is also really nice. Beacon has an app drawer, but unfortunately, if you find something that you don't want on it and you want to remove it, you can't. Hopefully this is going to be added with a future update, and I imagine it will. If you hold your finger on it, well, it doesn't do anything yet. In the app drawer as well, you can see that there is a settings menu here, but you can also access the settings by clicking the gear in the top right corner. We also have a couple native Android games on my device here, and you can add them to their own page as well. To add these native Android games to their own page, well, it's pretty easy too. Go back to the main menu here, click on the settings menu, hit the plus button in the bottom right corner, select the platform type as Android, then just select the apps that you wish to mark as games. I'm going to add Titan Quest and Shattered Pixel Dungeon. I'm going to actually select that and move that to the top of the list. When you're looking in the Android menu, it's just going to show the app icons. The icons don't look too great on this screen blown up with my capture card, but they look pretty good on the device itself. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool front end, and it sure didn't take very long to set it up. It's also really minimalistic, and I really like that in the front end. It lets us easily browse all our emulation titles really easy, and I think it looks really good. Some of these covers are looking a little better than others, and I'm not sure why, but I think over the next few updates, he should really be able to iron this out. Hopefully, we'll be able to get some better cover art. I think this one here looks pretty cool, but then you get ones like this that are a little blurry, and I'm not sure why. The most important thing, though, is that I got these nice Sonic covers. I'm just kidding. But it is nice to see some of these cover arts looking really cool. Hopefully he'll be able to get this fixed in the next few updates, but for now it doesn't look too bad and most of the cover art looks pretty decent. The other thing that I hope he manages to get fixed in future updates is these missing box arts. Out of all the systems that I've scraped, there's been about two or three per system. It doesn't take long to fix these missing box arts, but overall it's kind of up to the front end to automatically scrape that. I'm sure he should be able to fix these hopefully and I think it'll look really cool and it'll be really easy to set up once he's got it all working right. As of right now though I do think that the app is totally worth it and I definitely like how it looks. If you have a Nintendo Switch and you want that Switch like interface on your emulation device you gotta check this one out. One of the other bugs that I hope he manages to filter out in future updates is these gamelist.xml files. Hopefully he finds a way to filter these out because there's only one per system and some people might have this. However, it's pretty easy to delete and all you have to do is to go to that settings menu as mentioned, click on the system, scroll down till you find it, select the item and hit delete. 
The good thing is that this does not delete the file from the actual system itself, so it is going to be still usable on your other front end. It might also be nice to have a couple different theme options here. The dark one looks pretty cool, but it would be kind of nice to have some more vibrant colors. A lot of these colors look pretty nice, but they're a little bit more faded. I'd like a nice black background here for the dark, and a nice red color. I think that'd look pretty cool. I do like the addition of the fonts though, and I think that's pretty neat. I also just noticed Notice that there's a little sound as you swap games here. It's kind of cool, but it might be nice to have that option to disable that. If the community can build their own theme packs by having this background here as an image maybe instead of just a plain color, that also might be pretty neat. This would enable a lot of community interaction and custom theme packs are always really cool. I think this Dreamcast one here looks pretty nice with a dark simple background, but it might be look pretty neat with a Dreamcast logo or a little picture in the background here. You could also have a picture of the system, which what might look pretty cool on a black that would fill out the entire screen. But if this entire little color here that could be replaced with a photo, I definitely think that'd be a cool feature. For the small developer that made this, all I gotta say is amazing work. You've done a really good job at making this and overall I think this is going to be one of the biggest emulation front ends in the community in the coming years. Keep up the good work, add some new updates that give us a little bit more features and I think you're on the right track. You got everything that we need from automated scraping. It was really easy to add all my systems. All my games showed up and they linked to the emulators really quick. I like some of the options that you've given us from the different modes to scroll through our games. The settings menu is pretty Pretty bare bones but I think that's gonna be okay. Give us a few more updates maybe with a couple different themes. You got a nice clean minimalistic interface. It's really easy to organize all your systems. If you have a game here that you need to delete it's really easy to do that and it's really easy to rescrape them. I'm really hoping that this is gonna grow in the community over the next couple years and if you're interested definitely give this a try. If you have any questions make sure to let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and as always thanks for watching. Thank you.